Good afternoon and welcome to, sorry, whoops, <laughs> moving the camera subtly, that was supposed to be subtle. Uh, welcome to episode number 582 and topic today is stop loving someone who doesn't love you. And I think we'll dive into the relationship conversation today because it's only January 4th and I think I've covered the gamut, yes it's the 4th, um, covered the gamut of talks um, about New Year's stuff in the first few days. We'll see, we may come back to it, we'll see what happens. So first of all, um, thanks for being here, thanks for joining me. Oh, by the way, let me introduce myself so you know who I am. Petty, and nice to see my broadcast, I haven't seen you for a long time. My name is Barry Selby, I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women and high-achieving women create balance in life, love, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. As you can tell, I support women a lot, which is what inspired these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. I started doing these um, after the election last year, two years ago, excuse me, in, in actually it'll be three years ago now, I guess in a way, but 2016, just give me numbers right here. Um, and I started talking about this back in uh, December before last. So this has now been, sorry, I'm just figuring out my head. It's been just over two years now. So obviously I'm not, I haven't done them daily from the beginning, but I've been doing them daily for a long time now, which is why we're at episode number 582. And the topic today is don't love somebody who doesn't love you. I actually posted an article this morning, I think it was, yeah, this morning, about not jumping to relationship because you don't, because you feel like you want to get the love that you're not getting for yourself. And I'm going to talk about self-love in this one just to warn you ahead of time because it's such a key fundamental piece. But this idea about falling in love with somebody who doesn't love you is this um, cha tail chasing pattern that people do. Maybe not you, but somebody you know, where they're looking for love in all the wrong places, to quote that song, to hopefully find someone they can convince to love them back. And if there's somebody you know, please have them watch this video because I'm gonna break some things down in simple terms, at least I hope to be breaking them down in simple terms, to help you get clarity, direction, and focus if you're single looking for love and if you're already in a relationship and not getting what you want. So this is hopefully apply to both. So let me start with the latter first. So if you're in a relationship where there is no love being expressed and you've been in the relationship for a while and there was love at the beginning, I'm presupposing a lot of stuff here, I strongly suggest you have a conversation with your partner. If you were in love at the beginning when you fell in love together and you both shared love with each other and you both felt love from each other and now it's gone flat, there's two choices, actually three. First choice is to have a conversation, which I recommend highly, the second choice is to leave, which I recommend not as much, but maybe the choice. And third is keep putting up with what you already have with it, hoping it will change down the road. Not recommended at all. The thing about relationships a lot of people forget, especially when it comes to the intimate stuff about love, connection, intimacy, trust, and this sort of stuff, is that it also, um, I won't say requires, but it benefits from having communication. It's also easy in relationships to talk about the weather or talking about the errands you have to run or dates you're going to go on or messages, stuff like that. But, and, but the intimate stuff seems to be presumed to be telepathic. And if you're in a relationship like that, stop it. <laughs> I mean, stop trying to be telepathic. It's not, it, now, some people are. I mean, I, would admit, I, know, I know a couple of people who are telepathic, not in a relationship, but friends. Let me qualify that. They're telepathic with animals, not with people. I'm going totally off tangent here. If you're in a relationship with somebody, have a conversation if it's not working the way you want. That, that should make the point clear. Okay. If you have to leave, don't keep prolonging the agony either. It's like pulling a band-aid band -aid off very slowly that's just going to be painful all the way or just taking it fast and it gets initially shocked and then it comes down. Leaving a relationship can sometimes be challenging, especially if you're invested, especially if you've got commitments. But if you're not having love in the relationship, why are you still there? It's questions you might ask yourself. They're not the easy ones, I understand. So let me now switch to the single side, because that's my main focus of people I work with. I don't usually work with couples, I usually work with singles. The tendency when you feel that void inside the tendency when you feel that lack of love, that tendency when you are feeling like you want something you don't feel like you have, is to go outside for it. That's a human expression, we do that. But it's a very codependent p pattern when we don't honor and respect ourselves in the process. 
Now, I would like to think that everybody watching this, including you, has a very high self-esteem and self-regard that's not ego-based but heart-based that allows you to love yourself, respect yourself and appreciate yourself at all times, especially when you meet somebody new romantically. But if you know somebody who doesn't quite qualify for that, someone who perhaps hasn't had the experiences you have or hasn't had the training or the um, self-awareness to stand up for themselves and stay true to themselves, they need to watch this video. As I've said four or five times by now, I think you're getting my point. Because I know it's not about you, it's about other people. <laughs> I'm playing, I know. But this is the thing I want to make it clear about. In the article I posted this morning, I, I, it says, it's better to remain single than to go into a relationship that doesn't work or doesn't support you. And the thing about this is we tend, as people, to look for love out there, thinking that's where it comes from. And I've talked about this many times before. So if you watch my broadcast more often than not, you've heard me talk about this. this is, it's fundamental. I'm actually put it in my... That's why I have a, a product called self, the, self -love guided, the Guided Self-Love Meditation Practice. I'll put that in the comments for the link, the link for that. But the thing about it is, is we forget to love ourselves. And we somehow think it's only okay to love ourselves or to be loving when we're with somebody else. There's some rule that we have in this society and culture, perhaps, that when we're alone, loving is, is somehow a taboo. To love ourselves, to appreciate ourselves, to care for ourselves, is something aligned with masturbation or something, energetically thinking like, we can't do that because that's, that's wrong, that's sinful. And it, that is absolutely not correct. Loving ourselves, caring for ourselves, and even masturbation is totally healthy. I'm not going to get in that direction, but it, just in case you're wondering, my views on that <laughs> is it something that we forget that we tend to take care of ourselves now I'm talking about self-love from a holistic point of view not just a sexual point of view let me be clear about that in this context I've got some interesting tangents showing up in my conversation today but my reminder to you my invitation to you my encouragement to you is if you're single and you are thinking about getting into a relationship thinking and perhaps feeling driven to get a relationship if you're not loving yourself fully first don't go there yet. It's kind of like the idea that it's, it's um, I'm going to say this. Well, that's an interesting analogy. Okay, I'll try this one out. It's, they say it's better to go grocery shopping when you've already eaten. Otherwise, you might buy a bunch of stuff you don't want. That works. The same thing's true of relationship. If you don't fill up your own fuel, love tanks first, you may pick up or attract people you don't want afterwards because you realize afterwards you made a mistake in choosing. So, Better to love yourself first than attract a relationship that is in the overflow and works more easily. And you can choose more selectively. Again, you should go shopping when you've already, already eaten. Go grocery, sorry, go grocery shopping when you've already eaten. Let me use that analogy better than that. Because, again, if you go, shop, if you go grocery shopping when you're hungry, you're going to get a lot of stuff you don't really want. The same is true in love and relationships, as bizarre as it sounds. But trust me, it is true. The self-love practice that I recommend all the time and that I'm practicing myself more and more and I tell my clients and I give my clients that that um, nudge <laughs> is a fundamental piece of learning how to be in a healthy relationship there's a whole things that I've talked about as many times about whole many talks I've done about this and, and suggestions about codependence which is a trap we many many of us fall into I fell into it many times that is not functional but it's convenient and it's also familiar because of the way society teaches us is that we're not complete unless we have somebody else in our lives ain't true it's totally fine to be single for an extended period of time even now if you're avoiding a relationship because you're afraid of getting wounded again we should have another conversation about that and if you're learning to love yourself first your choosing into relationship comes at a much higher level and you basically are much more willing to support yourself and be willing to say no more easily because you won't say yes to somebody unless they add to what you already have in a way that you feel aligned Self-love is a powerful tool. I recommend it highly because if you want to attract a relationship out there, the more you love yourself, the more attractive you become for them as well. This is a win-win-win. Yeah, win-win-win. I'm just going to make sure I have the right number of wins in there. Method to get the love you want. If you go out hungry, looking for love in all the wrong places, you're going to get love in all the wrong places. I think I made my point clear enough. Self-love first, then attract love from out there. And if you're a woman who is... Um, healing your wounds to attract the right relationships I can help you more with that because the thing I talked about in actually I think it's in the article I posted today 
for me and my clients, before I help them track the relationship, is help them learn to love themselves and heal their wounds first. Because if you don't do those two things first, you will definitely attract relationships that don't support you. So I advise you to look at your own stuff, your own issues, your own pain, your own wounds first. Love yourself at the same time. Because by the way, something I talked about, about a while ago now, about forgiveness. If you've been thinking about doing forgiveness work and wondering why it doesn't work, I can guarantee you one of the reasons why it may not work, I guarantee you may, yeah, okay. My grammatical choices here are coming interesting. If you aren't actually loving who you are, then the availability of compassion for yourself on which fake forgiveness is based will not work as well. It becomes very mental. And it's basically mental masturbation. Forgiveness is a powerful tool. I recommend it. I've got, I've talked about it in my book. I've got two different um, workbooks on it. However, the caveat is having compassion for yourself first allows, it's like lubricating the wheels so the engine doesn't seize. Forgiveness is the engine that heals your traumas in the past, but you need oil in the engine for it to work smoothly. That's compassion, which is basically fueled by self-love. So if you're carrying wounds from the past, learning to love yourself, yes, may bring up those wounds, but it'll bring up them in a way that you can work with them, heal them, and forgive them. And that is why self-love is so fundamental in my, in my work and what I help my clients. Again, I'll put the link in the comments for the self-love practice because I believe it will help everybody. I was talking about it last year um, quite often. <laughs> because it's such a fundamental piece. And if you want to learn how to love yourself, this is one of the simplest ways I know how. It's a tool that I've used, I've taught it, I teach it, I share it, I create a product out of it, which I'll put the link in the comments again, because it's something that we forget to do. And self-love, honestly, self-love truly, is a more powerful tool than you ever had an idea about before. And getting into a relationship, forgiving yourself, healing past wounds, becoming more effective, all of those become more effective when you love yourself first. I think I've belabored this point long enough. So having said all that, again, I'll put the links in the comments for both um, the self-love practice and also how you can reach out to me if you want help in the area of relationship, relationship love and stuff like that. And um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, comments about this, please put them below and I will respond to them once I sign off. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll tell you about that in a moment because this is actually Facebook Live first. Um, it's a simple practice, I know. And I keep belaboring the point because so many people have yet to remember how to do it and to actually practice it. But you can do that now. I think you've got, yeah, all right, I'm over that. So replays, just to get jumping to that quickly, I'm gonna sign off and get, get going some other things tonight. Um, this is my Facebook Live first on my personal page, which is facebook.com Facebook forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. And all of them are on there. You can also find them on my YouTube channel, which I've also put them onto. So all my Facebook lives are then exported and put onto YouTube. So my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to the channel. And in there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine where all of these live. And that's the second one. Third one you find my on my podcast. I've actually created the audio versions of these by stripping up the video. Simple stuff, really. Um, on my podcast, which is called Messages from the, from the Masculine, you can subscribe to that too. And you can download the audios, listen to them when you want. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, hi, Gina. Actually, we need to talk about getting back online with our weekly talks, maybe next week. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Every day is my, my intention. It does vary sometimes, but 5 p.m. Pacific time is my choice and my usual time. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves and learn to love yourself more than you did today. It will change your life. Bye.